yo what's good y'all it's your boy chris and back with another youtube video and today we got a different type of youtube video today we are going to be reacting to three disturbing true stories from people's childhoods childhoods lord i fucking been struggling for the last three minutes with this intro if you guys do enjoy this video please make sure to share this video with your friends and fam and hit that subscribe button we are on our way to 10k we are 4k away well less than 4k away i know we can get there so help your boy out and let's get straight into it oh they're kind of low but chris oh yeah this better be good then oh yeah this gotta be good this happened when i was a young child maybe like eight years old my parents had me late my two older siblings are both at least 10 years older than me. I was woken up in the middle of the night to a commotion from downstairs one night. It was my parents. I cracked my door open and heard my parents freaking out about what? something. I wasn't sure what it was. I went to the stairs. They could have been arguing. The top, calling down mom, dad. My mom came to the bottom of the stairs and said to me, go back to bed. I listened without asking any questions. I could tell they were stressed about something, though. I was trying to go back to sleep when I heard the front door downstairs slam shut and then oh, I don't know. silence. I presumed they left the house, but I wasn't sure why. Either way, I listened to my mom and went back to sleep. I woke up again to sounds downstairs once more. It was the sound of the front door closing and then footsteps, but no talking. Naturally, I assumed they were back home and just being quiet so that they wouldn't wake me up. I heard occasional steps and thuds from downstairs. I heard drawers and cabinets being opened and closed, and I thought for sure I heard the fridge opening too. I thought it was my older brother Chris, who was 10 years older than me, and at the time he was already driving, so he was going out and- Damn, home. how old is this so nigga? getting home at like 2 a.m. and rummaging the fridge wasn't abnormal at all. These are all things I was telling myself, logical explanations as to what I was hearing. Eventually, I heard footsteps coming up the stairs, getting louder and closer until they reached the top and then made their way first thing to my door. My door quietly and slowly opened. I didn't sit up or move. I just had my eyes open facing the door and uh, I was still know. laying down. There weren't any lights on outside of my room. Girl, who sleeps facing to like who sleeps facing towards their door? You know how you know what type of monster you got to be to face your door when you're sleeping? I face the wall. Call me a pussy. I don't care. I face the wall. Room. Whoever was walking around was doing so in the dark. So all I saw was this black mass at my doorway, resembling the shape of someone's head. I said every name, starting from Chris to Mom to Dad. Then I just said, who's there? They didn't reply. They just closed the door, and I was left there confused, but mildly creeped out. I heard footsteps going downstairs. I was convinced it was my dad now, just coming to check on me after getting home, though I wasn't sure why he was ignoring me. Ah, because yeah, he would have said something. From downstairs for a while now. I allowed curiosity to get the better of me, and I went downstairs in the dark. I kept all the. <sighs> why? Why? Why would you let curiosity get the best of you? Why? Lights off as I was approaching the kitchen, and I froze at the doorway. Noticing a tall figure standing right in the middle of the kitchen. Yep. I said, nope. Dad, assuming nope. it was him just based off the size of this person. A deep voice said, go back upstairs. I ran back up the stairs to my room and closed the door and jumped under the covers. All I was thinking was, why did my dad's voice sound like that? The reality... Because that wasn't your dad, fuck nigga. The reality of a stranger being in the house didn't dawn on my innocent little mind. Not until a little later... When I heard the front door opening and a commotion from downstairs again, the voices of my parents. I went to the top of the stairway again, and they were shocked to see I was still awake. I asked what happened. They told me mm -hmm. that Chris had a little accident, but that he was going to be fine. I found out months later that he had gotten into a car accident driving in a condition that he shouldn't oh, have been driving in. He was drunk. My parents got a call from the hospital. He was so drunk. So I rushed to see him first thing, leaving me to sleep. I asked my dad if he had come in my room before, and that was when I learned that they had been gone for hours. My mom started freaking out, yelling at my dad because he had neglected to lock the door when they rushed out of the house. 
me telling my parents about the person at my bedroom door and in the kitchen caused my dad to search the house with his gun and my mom to call the police. Ah, oh, that nigga was blicked up. The last thing I really remember oh, he was blicked up. police officer up. to give my story. My parents tell me that they felt like morons having to explain to the cops that they left me alone and left the door unlocked. I don't think anything... Oh, you know CPS was on their ass. Oh, I know it. Ellie was stolen. Even though whoever broke into the house clearly didn't have intentions of harming me, having a complete stranger in your house is already a terrifying ordeal. Now, imagine going through that at eight years old. See... If I was a robber or something and I broke into somebody's house and I seen the kid just in the bed, bro, I'm going to let the kid be. But if I walked in to somebody's house and or not walked in, but I broke into somebody's house and I seen that grandma sleeping in a room peacefully, just. Boy, I'm about to hit her with the cleanest haymaker of all time i'm telling you i'm sending that hole straight to jesus straight to jesus heather c let's see what you got it was around 2013 to 2014. my brother was about seven or eight at the time and we had just moved into a new house to be closer to school and for cheaper rents it was a pretty nice house all things considered mm, okay we even had a cozy fireplace for the winter Anyway, my brother was really into Batman and had this Batman car that, if a button was pressed, made noises and lit up. It was mm, basically his favorite. That kind of that car looked hard though. Often. Then one afternoon, he came inside from playing out back and told us he found something. So obviously, my mom and I asked what it was. It was a picture of a young boy in the form of one of those tags you get if your parents paid extra for school photos. The picture was dirty, oh, and no wear and tear, even to the point you couldn't see the year it was taken. We thought that, okay, some parent lost their kid's picture. No big deal. And then my brother said something that confused me. That's Buddy, he said. And I looked what do you mean, Buddy? Who's Buddy? I basically asked him to repeat himself. And he did. He pointed at the picture and said, this is Buddy. He's my friend. I slowly nodded my head as if I knew who he was talking about. The main reason this confused me is because my brother didn't make friends easily. And he had no friends that I knew of. <laughs> that nigga loser. He only came up once we had moved. I shrugged <laughs> it off and figured he'd made friends with the next door neighbors or something. And he somehow got the school picture as like a keepsake. That night around 3 a.m. when everyone in the house was asleep. I woke up to my brother talking. So naturally annoyed. I walked into his room to tell him to go to bed or else he'd wake up our parents. It was weird because when I walked into his room. He was sitting up straight in his bed as if he was actually talking to someone and not just to himself or his toys. Nope. I told him to go to bed and I went to bed myself. A couple days later, my mom was talking to me about my brother and asked if I'd seen him get up at night. And I said, no, I woke up to him talking a few nights ago, but that was it. Why? And she said he had been acting weird. But as usual, we both shrugged it off as him being a kid. Nope, nope, nope. I promise you. Let me have a kid, bro. And they start acting all funny, fuzzy, weird. I don't care. Start acting unchildlike, like it got possessed or something. I promise you, I'm kicking that kid right out. That kid is gonna be out on the curb. I promise you, I'm not dying. I'm gonna let the foster home take care of that. I'm not getting chopped up by no kid. Now in my room. My bed was right across from my door, meaning if I turned over, I could see into the hallway right in front of me. Y'all better not call me no asshole for that. I ain't no asshole. And since I myself was and still am very afraid of the dark, I left the hallway light on, knowing my dad would turn it off once he got up and I'd probably be asleep by then. I was laying in my bed facing my door when a sudden noise made me jump. It was my brother's damn Batman car. It was making noises. Oh, hell no. I got up to tell my brother that he shouldn't be up this late playing. But when I got into his room, he was asleep in his bed with the toy across the room on the floor, still making noise. I walked over to it to turn it off. I was finally able to go back to sleep. But the following days, my brother would not shut up about Buddy. It was honestly starting to freak me out. So I went over to the neighbor's houses to the right and left of us. One house didn't even have kids, and the other was vacant. This started to worry me. But my dad said it was probably just an imaginary friend he came up with. 
I went along with it since I no, didn't think of any no, solution. No, 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 that's the no, thing. Ever. No, that's the thing you don't do. You don't go along with it. Why would you egg it on? You are gonna let the motherfucker get closer to the child, and it, and then when when you notice that the child start acting all <laughs> on your ass, then you gonna wanna try to oh let's do something about it. Let's do something about it. No, it's too late, motherfucker. That that child's gone. That child is gone, my nigga. Ain't no coming back. You about to get stabbed in the back every night. One of us, my mom, dad, or sister, would say we heard my brother's voice making noise and had to go into the room and turn it off. I explained that I had to do it as well and once again brought up my brother talking to someone one night. My dad swore up and down that the toy was probably motion activated, but when we bought it, there was no advertisement for motion activation. My sister and I were so unnerved by it that we started to sleep in my room together, which I'm glad we did or else I'd probably write this off as a bad dream. My sister and I were talking, trying to keep each other calm and in good spirits, until we heard the dreaded noise of my brother's toy. We both looked toward my open door and into my brother's room, which was right across mine into his room. No way I'll see him with the door open. Our turned into those of horror as we saw our brother's toy rolling past the door all on its own. We screamed and ran to our parents' room, and they got mad at our brother, saying it was a cruel joke to play on us. As we were already freaked out, what he said sent chills down my spine. It wasn't me, but he wanted to play. That night, the toy went into the trash, batteries taken out and all. My sister get that shit out of here. Until the next day, my brother had the toy again. And my parents accused him of getting it out of the trash, to which he responded, Buddy got it for me. Oh, the toy was broken into small pieces and thrown away for the final time. Damn! My brother was obviously nope, upset, you don't piss it off. Got him a new Batman. Yeah, yeah, I done pissed him off. And figurine, and everything was fine. It wasn't nope. until about a week later when we all felt that everything was okay now, and that Buddy was gone. My mom was cooking chicken breasts on the countertop George Foreman grill, and she had come into the living room to ask us something. And then we all jumped as we heard a crash in the kitchen. We went in there to see the George Foreman grill. Wait, was that? Was that in the video? And we all jumped as we heard a crash in the kitchen. We yo, yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, that audio is crazy. That audio is crazy. That shit got it. I actually jumped from that audio. That got it. We went in there to see the George Foreman grill halfway across the kitchen as if it had been thrown. My mom swore it was nowhere near the edge. And my dad had no explanations. Nothing happened afterwards, and we moved out about a year later. But to this day, I wonder if my brother's imaginary friend Buddy wasn't imaginary. Oh shit, a bonus story. Anonymous. When I was just 10, we moved to a new house in a different town. I was entering a new elementary school as a fifth grader, which is always tough. Starting out, it was a bit awkward, as all the kids already knew each other, as I was just some random kid entering the scene. Oh, I hated that. I hated that so fucking much, bro. Man, shut your bitch ass up, nigga. Nobody asked you how to bitch ass. My elementary school, you were made to sit with the kids from your class during lunch. And I remember it being really awkward the first few days at school. Yeah, you don't make friends for like a, a good minute. And I was judged as the new kid, so it made making new friends more difficult. But those initial days of being the new kid on the block, I actually met a few of the kids on the block. One of the kids was Dan, who went to a private school, so we went to different schools. Uh, he rich, rich. We met while I was biking down the street, and he asked if I had just moved into the house on the corner. We started hanging out from there. And then a few days later, I met Alex. Alex actually rang the bell one day and asked my parents for me. I was confused when my parents called me to the door and introduced me to him. He said he lived down the block and wanted to know if I liked video games. Of course, I said yes, and he invited me over to his house to play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I didn't have that game, but I really yeah, W game, it, so W game. Yes. We walked to his house, which was literally the corner house at the opposite end of the block. 
Nope. I'm not stepping a foot in that fucking house. I'm turning right the fuck around. Right. In a way, I felt like the house looked less nice than every other house on the block. It was the same size as most, but it just nah, it looks right creepy, down, man. Not taken care of. There was no grass. The front yard. My nigga, no. It, big it looks of like with a walkway cutting through them to the front door. We entered the house, and it was equally disheveled inside. It was like a house of hoarders. Boxes of junk everywhere in every room. You're getting killed in the house. To the basement, which smelled like 15 cats lived down there. Weirdly enough, there didn't seem to be any pets. The basement was a pigsty. It may have been the messiest room in the house. We sat on this brown leather couch placed right in front of the TV. Ah, uh, GG. They got put on casting couch. Oh, my Lord. The GameCube and PS2. He booted up San Andreas, and we played the two-player <laughs> mode. And it was actually fun. And in that moment, I thought I was going to like Alex and would want to be friends with him. Eventually, I wanted to go home. And so I said I got to go. And he seemed really disappointed, like he wanted to keep hanging out. We'd already been playing for like two hours, though. So I just wanted to go home. He followed me halfway home until I said, see you later. Basically saying in a friendly way, all right, go away now. That was the first warning sign that Alex was a wacko. But I didn't find it concerning just yet. The next day, Alex rang the doorbell again and asked my parents if I could come. I mean, home. but hold on, wait. Hold on, let's backtrack on that. That can't mean that he's a weirdo because he wanted to walk you home, though. I could see him wanting to keep you there for over an extended amount of time, but him wanting to walk you home, maybe he just want, like, I, right, you my boy, I'm about to make sure you get to your destination safe. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Play. This time we played GameCube in my room. But if, hey, yeah, he see it how he see it, though. He see it how he see it. Judgmental, but I was starting to not really like him just because I felt like he was weird and he made me uncomfortable with how physically close he got to me. Oh, shit. Sure. The next day after school, he rang the bell again. I wasn't really in the mood and told my mom to tell him I don't feel good. So he left. I would rather hang out with Dan, honestly, because I just liked him more. That same day, <laughs> That's I rode my bike up to Dan's house <laughs> to see if he could hang out. He was down, so we started riding our bikes further up the block. And this was a mistake, because as we passed Yeah, I was about town, to say, don't you? outside onto his front stoop, as if he were waiting by the window. It was weird, but it was also awkward, because I just had my mom tell him that I was sick before. As we passed, I told Dan that I hung out with that kid, and that I felt like he was slightly weird. Dan was shocked that I hung out with him, saying that whole family is crazy. I found out oh, so he know about him. was actually a couple years older than me. He was 12. From this point, I decided to steer clear. That's still kids. The next weekend, Alex came to our door again asking for me. I told my mom before this already to tell him I'm not home if he came back. <laughs> so she did that. But late that night, I woke up to my window completely open and a cool breeze blowing into the room. It was a chilly September night, so I most definitely left the window closed originally. Waking up to an unexpected breeze made me question who could have done that. Then no. I felt something poke my foot and I screamed. What? I looked at the foot of my bed and saw Alex. He told me to be quiet. It's just him. Before I could even ask what he was doing in my room, he explained that his parents were fighting and he wanted to sleep with me. He climbed through my window. I was in shock. I told him to get out. He pleaded with me to let him sleep in bed with me. Again, I told him to get out. Watching him yeah, he lost me, bro. my window was a disturbing scene. I closed the window and locked it, and then went straight to my parents to wake them up and lost tell me, them. Bro. They couldn't believe it. He lost me. The next day, my parents both went down the you block. You sneaking into niggas cribs? He lost when me. When they came back, they said it didn't go well. Alex's crazy mom screamed and laughed in my parents' faces, taking no accountability for her son's oh. actions. I'm sure my parents didn't want to get police involved because Alex was just a kid. But however many nights later, I woke up to knocks at my window. Bro, I nah. Closed, but I knew for a fact it was Alex. I would even go open it. No. Yeah, you're good. The knocks went uh. on and on for like five minutes. I even heard an attempt at opening the window. I was actually scared. I remember my heart racing. Nah, this kid is crazy. The knock stopped. I went to tell my parents, and they told me to just ignore it. I think they weren't as threatened because, like I said before, Alex was just a kid. It was 
was probably a few days later when Dan and I, along with another kid I made friends with from school, were biking from my house down the block, and when we passed Alex's house, I saw him run to the window as we passed. Oh, hell no. Just watched. I told my friends about what happened, and they found it hilarious. See, you don't piss the kid off, bro. He one of those creepy school shooter type kids, bro. You piss him off, he's just gonna be looking. They ain't gonna fucking shoot your ass. And up. My other friend made a comment about how he sounds like someone who would live in a gross house like that. That night, for the final time, was that scary? The sound in my room. Was that scary, y'all? The sound of my window being shattered. I screamed like a girl as I saw Alex <laughs> climbing. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, at that high pitched girl scream. <laughs> through the window, through the closed blinds. I ran to my parents' room and woke them up. By this point, Alex was already back outside. My dad went outside and chased him all the way back to his house, with what Alex sneaking back inside his house before my dad could catch up to him. Oh, that nigga fast. The door until Alex's parents opened up. And my dad must have said something right, because he somehow managed to convince Alex's oh, parents to pay for the window if he didn't involve the police. They ended up paying whatever it cost to fix the window. And I never heard from Alex mm -hmm. again. Nigga stood on business. see him once or twice in front of his Nigga house. stood on business. While in the car passing his house. That family eventually ended up moving somewhere else, thankfully. I think there's a chance Alex was looking to do something crazy, like murder me, or at the very least attack me. That nigga he was on with other kids that Jeffrey Dahmer shit. I mean, My fuck was on that Jeffrey Dahmer window shit. I'm telling, and telling you. Inside. I'm telling you. I'm scared to wonder what kind of person Alex grew up to be. Man, if y'all did enjoy that video, man, make sure to drop a like down below. Share this video with y'all friends. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, if you guys do like these type of videos, uh, make sure to comment down below more videos for me to react to. And uh, let me know if you guys do fuck with these type of videos. And uh, go watch the recent skit if y'all haven't already. You didn't have to cut me off